Segment links, intersecting chords, secants, and tangents. Type one, intersecting chords inside the circle. So the intersection lands within the circle. Type two, intersecting secants outside the circle. So an exterior to secants. And type three is an intersecting secant and tangent outside the circle. So one length is a tangent and one length is a secant. So we're asking about um, lengths of lines, not angles of our um, connecting segments. So we did angle work in the last couple of sections, and now we actually want to know how long each of these lines are. So to find any given length of these lines, they're proportionate to each other, which means you can create a proportion, well, and if you multiply it, cross multiply it, you would end up multiplying uh, these proportionate lengths together. So A times B, A times B equals C times D. For type two, you are multiplying the segments together, but it's not just these two segments, you have to include the whole segment. So for example, this entire length here, we would call that A plus B. And then this entire length, we would call C plus D. So when you multiply it, you do the length that is from the intersection to the edge of the circle, A times the whole segment, a plus B equals the small chunk C times C plus D. Part times whole, part times whole. And then type three, it's the same thing, B times B plus C, so part times part plus whole. And then for this one, it would be part times part or part times whole, which in this case would be A times A. Or another way to say that is a squared. So that little tangent is going to be squared because it's multiplying by itself. So let's try this on. Find each value or measure. Assume that uh, segments that appear to be tangent are tangent. So solve for x. The intersection is interior, so we multiply each piece together. So x times 10 or 10 times x, whichever way you want to write it. Um, let's do 10 times x. And then it doesn't matter which direction you multiply this, either 14 times 15 or 15 times 14. So I'll just write it as 14 times 15. So then this is going to be a 10x equals 210, 14 times 15. Divide by 10 and x equals 21. Find BD, so they eventually want to know what the whole length of this segment is here. So we're going to do a part times a part and a part times a part. So 4 times 5x minus 1 equals 6 times 6. So then we distribute, so 4 times 5 is 20x, 4 times negative 1 is negative 4 equals 36 plus four, divide by 20. So x equals two, but we wanna know the length of BD, this entire length here. So we're gonna plug it into this chunk so we can add it to four. So five times two minus one, 10 minus one or nine, nine and four is 13. You try number three, uh, actually, no, let's do number three together. <laughs> I almost said to do it on your own, but actually, no, go ahead and do number three on your own. You can do that one. Try that one.
You can also do number four. Go ahead and try that one. All right, let's try number five together. So this is an exterior point. So you're gonna do your part times your whole. So you've got your eight and your eight plus 19. And then this guy would be a nine times a nine plus X. So your part times your whole and your part times your whole. So let's do this one first. So eight times eight plus 19 equals nine times x plus nine or nine plus x. So this is gonna be eight times 27 equals, and then let's go ahead and distribute this. Nine times nine is 81, nine times x is nine x. Eight times 27 is 216 minus 81. So x equals 15. You try number six. All right, number seven is another one you can try. Uh, seven and eight are ones you can try on your own. All right, let's take a look at number nine together. The difference between this one and the last couple is that I have one secant and one tangent. So that length of 24 does not go inside of the circle, but you use it, you're still doing a you know part times a whole, but the part and the whole are the same number. So let's do this piece first. So 18 times X plus 18, part times the whole, and then part times the whole on this one is 24 times 24, which is gonna be 24 squared. So then we've got 18x plus 324, whoops, 24. And then 24 squared is 576 minus 324, 252, and x equals 14. Similar one here, go ahead and try this one.
Oh, I missed, I missed kind of showing something up here. So part times the whole on this one, the whole, you do the eight and the four together. I just wrote it, but I didn't actually explain it. So this is where the three X plus 12 came from. So that's gonna be a three X eight and four to make 12. I'm sorry, I did not highlight that. It was just moving too quickly. So don't forget that when you add those together, those constants, the eight and the four or the seven and the two would go together for the whole. So let's try this one. So this one's gonna be an eight times a five X and then the eight minus one is gonna make that a seven equals 16 squared. And then plug it back in for PN. 25 minus one, 24. All right, let's take a look at this one. So part times a whole, 27 times 27 plus 21, which is 48. And then a part times a whole on this one is an X and an X. And an X times an X is not a 2X, it's an X squared. So then we've got X squared equals 1,296. And the opposite of a square is a square root. And the square root of 1,296 is 36. Let's try this one. 9 times 9 plus 16, which is 25, equals part times part, or whole times whole, so 3x times 3x squared. 9 times 25 is 225. 3x times 3x is 3 times 3, which is 9, and x times x, which is x squared. Then we divide both sides by 9. So then we get x squared equals 25. And the square root of 25 is 5. All right, we're back to an intersection in the middle here. So we've got to multiply each piece together. So 12 times 10. And then these two pieces both have x's. Make sure you group them together with parentheses. So x minus one times x plus six. 12 times 10 is 120. And then on this right hand side, we're going to double distribute or uh, double distribution or what you might've learned as foil first, outer, inner, last. So x times x is x squared. x times six is six x negative one X, negative six. So then we've got 120 equals X squared, and then six X, five, six X minus one is five X's minus six. And now this equation is a quadratic. I can see it's a quadratic because it's got an X squared and it's in a trinomial form, X squared five X minus six, where it's a ax squared plus a bx plus a c. And so if we want to solve this more uh, very efficiently, the best way to do it is to factor. And factor may look different for different people. Some people like to use the area model, the box, where you put it in the four squares. Or some people use grouping, which is still the, the very first thing you need to do is get your equation equal to zero. So the first thing to do is subtract 120. So then we get zero equals x squared plus five x, and then now it's minus 126. And then you do a times c, in this case an a is a one, so one times negative 126 is negative 126. And then I like to draw a little t-table to give me my factors of 126. And I just know this one off the top of my head that 14, a uh, negative nine and a 14 multiply to negative 126. 
So then our factors are x minus 9 times x plus 14. And then equals 0. So then our two solutions are x equals 9 and x equals negative 14. Well, in this case, negative 14 cannot be a solution as we're not working with negative values. So if I had negative 14 plus 6, this would be a negative length. So the only true solution in this case is x equals 9. On the next one, I'll show the area model. x times, or do the part times the whole, part times the whole. So we got x times x plus 5. 4 times 2 plus 4, or 6. x times x is x squared. x times 5 is 5x equals 24. Again, I've got a quadratic, x squared and a 5x and a constant, so it needs to be equal to zero, so subtract 24. And now I'll show the area model. So you put your x squared in this box and the negative 24 down here. And we want our 5x to be split evenly between these two boxes. But how do we split them? Well, we have to work backwards. So we know we've got an x and an x. And you have to say what two numbers multiply to negative 24 but add to, add to 5. So we've got negative 24. And you can do the whole table. So 1 and 24, 2 and 12, 3 and 8. And I think those are the pairs. But uh, you could go one more, 4 and 6. So it's definitely 3 and 8, and the 3 is negative because I want it to be a positive 5. So it's going to be a negative 3x and an 8x because 8 minus 3 is 5. So then this is an 8, and this is a negative 3. So then our factors are x minus 3, x plus 8 equals 0. So our two solutions are 3 and negative 8. But again, negative 8 can't be a solution here because we're only looking for positive values. So our only true solution is positive 3. Why don't you try the last two on your own? Thank you.